So welcome to another video in the series Python tricks. And in this video, we are going to see Lambda functions. So let's get started. So what are Lambda functions? Lambda functions are also functions in Python, just that they are like expressions. So what are expressions? Expressions are something that evaluates to some value, right? Expressions always evaluate to some value. Let's say four plus five. Four plus five, five is an expression and it evaluates to nine. X plus Y provided if x plus y has some uh, value or integer in it, then it is going to evaluate to some value, right? And similarly, lambda functions also evaluate to some value, hence they are also called as single expressions. Lambda functions are also anonymous because they don't have a name by default. So we will learn more about lambda functions. Let's get started and see how they are created first. So on the screen, let's try to create a very basic lambda function. So they are also they, they are create, created by using the keyword lambda. So I'll have that uh, lambda here. Now followed by colon and your place your expression. So let's say I put five plus six, which means this is a very basic lambda that evaluates to eleven in every case. Whenever it is invoked, it is going to produce eleven. Now lambda functions can also accept arguments, right? Just before the colon, you can provide a comma separated list of arguments. So now let's say Let's make this lambda accept arguments. So let's say I say x plus x comma y, and right now body is not using it. So let's do that. So let's say x plus y. Now this lambda is a function which takes x and y and gives the addition, the result of addition of x plus y. So it's like a simple add function, right? Now, how to invoke this lambda functions? So there are basically two ways of invoking the lambda function. One is you assign it to some variable and then use that variable as a function. So let's do that. So let's say I assign it to a variable called as var. And now what I can do is that I can simply invoke var like this, just that that Lambda function also accepts two values. So I need to provide two values. So let's say I provide five comma six. Now uh, I can capture the result here. So let's say I capture the result. And now if I try to print this, okay, I'm not printing it. it prints 11. That's what we expect as the answer. There is a second way of calling the lambda function, which is like inline. Then in there itself, you can call or invoke the lambda function. So let's see how you can do that, how we can do that. Uh, so let's remove this. And the entire lambda function can be invoked here like this. So what we are doing is we are not creating any reference or having any variable that holds the reference to this particular lambda function what we are doing essentially is just invoking we are creating and invoking the lambda function then and there itself by passing the arguments that it needs and we get the result here so let's try to execute this one as well and that's how we can invoke the lambda function next we should look at some points before moving on with the lambda functions so that we understand them better so these are the points that I was talking about. So lambda functions are also called as single expression functions because lambda functions can have only one expression, but they can have n number of arguments. So you can provide multiple arguments. Second, that lambda functions don't have any explicit return statement. So you don't have to write explicitly what value you want the lambda function to return. Rather, lambda function will return you it uh, implicitly. It will, it will return you implicitly. You don't have to write any explicit return statement. And third, they cannot have type annotations. Like type annotations are like saying this variable is of this type. What what are the what could be the type? It could be like integer, string, dictionary, list, or any other type. It's important to know that you cannot use them with lambda functions. Though you can use it with the regular functions they are, that are created using the def keyword. You can use it like so. For example, I've created just just to show you that a def function f it, it accepts two arguments a and y and a is an integer and y is an y is, a, y is a string. But you cannot use it with the lambda functions. That's an important important point to note. And lambda functions this I think I have already told that lambda functions don't have a name by default and that's why they are also called as anonymous functions. So now let's see some examples on lambda functions and understand them better. So let's see our let's look at our first example. In the first example, we have a list and F, and that list contains tuples. So basically it's a list of tuples. And let's say we want to sort them based on integers, right? 
So basically, it's a list of objects, in other words. And we want to sort a list of objects. In that case, we can use this sorted function and we can pass the list of objects. But we need to tell the sorted function based on what key we want to sort. Meaning, if we have to compare two objects and we want to decide which one should go first, we have to make a decision based on some attribute of that particular object or if that's in this case, it's a tuple. So we should know based on what item we should make that decision. This sorted function needs to decide based on what item in that tuple it has to sort. It has to decide which one, which tuple should be placed first. For that, we are passing that key as a lambda function. So basically sorted is while when it, whenever it has to make that decision, it is going to pass both of those tuples in this lambda function and lambda function is going to return the key. And that key in this case would be x of one, which is always the characters, right? So we expect the sorted order should be should be like A, G, K, Z in the sorted order. So let's try to execute this and see. So yeah, you see that A, G, K, and Z. And that's that's what uh, we, we have Z here first before K. But in the sorted order, K, K, K appears before Z, Z meaning Z. So now let's say we want to sort it based on the integers. So I can simply do zero here. And now if I run, now if I run, you see that one, two, three, and four, that's how it is sorted. And we are using Lambda functions to achieve, uh, Lambda function to achieve this. So I hope you understood this. So let's move on to the next example using the map function. So map function is fairly simple to understand. Map function takes in an iterable. Basically, in this case, that particular iterable is a list that contains strings and all the characters of the, that string is capital letters. So what we want to do is we want to convert all those uh, capital letters to small letters for every item in this list, for every string that is present in this list. A map function takes in a list and an operation and applies that operation to every item of that list and then finally return and it returns an iterator that can be converted to a list. So let's see what hap what's happening here. So I have a map function. It takes in this particular list and it takes in a Lambda function. What this Lambda function does, it takes in an argument and for that particular argument, it applies str.lower function, which means if Dhoni, th this particular string is passed to Lambda and then it is going to convert Dhoni, but with small characters, all the characters will be small in the final string. And this will happen to all the elements, all the items in this list. So that's how this is going to work, which means for every string in this particular list, capital char names, we are going to convert it to small char names by applying this Lambda to every item, every string of this particular list. So let's try to run and see what's the output. So you see, right? So what happened? Map took Dhoni, which is this Dhoni, applied this particular str.lower and then added that to list. And then some, again, it took this string, which is Virat, and converted that to small and added that to list and so on and so forth. And that's how the map function works. So let's move on to our third example. Third example is on the filter function. So filter function is also like map function, just that filter takes a function as an argument and, a, an, and an iterable as an argument. So it, that iterable could be a list in this case. So let's see this. So what we want to do is that we have this nums list and we want to filter out all the odd numbers. And finally, even numbers should be there in the final list. So what filter does is that it takes that num and takes in a Lambda function and what it does is that for every item, every number in this nums list, it's going to pass that to the Lambda and see whether or not the return value is a true or false. If it's a true, then it's going to keep it in the final list. If it's a false, it won't keep it. So for example, it passes in one and it checks if one, once this operation is done, which checks if whether a number is an even or odd, this, this condition will be evaluated to false for one and hence one won't be included in the final list. When it passes two, four, six, or eight, then this condition will be evaluated to true. And hence the final list is going to contain two, four, six, eight, while it will also eliminate one, three, five, and seven at the same time. So let's run this and see. 
And yes, that's what we expected. So two, four, six, and eight is what we expected in the final list. And that's how, that's what we are getting. Lambda functions can also be used as closures. If you don't know about closures, please go ahead and check my another video in the same playlist. I'll put the link to that video in the description so that you can find it easily. Uh, I have explained the concept of closures. So that is really important for you to understand this particular example. So I have this outer function and I am returning a lambda function from this particular outer function, right? Now, once this outer function is invoked, it returns a lambda function, which is stored in the C variable. Now, once this C variable, because now this holds the reference to the lambda function, it can be invoked as a function. And this lambda function accepts one parameter. So we are also passing 100 here. Now this 100, this X will contain 100 and A is containing 10. We should expect 110 as the output. So let's try to execute and see what it prints. So it prints correctly 110. The question here is, the lambda function also has access to the state of the outer function. After, after the lambda function is returned, it is still has access to this variable A, which was defined in the outer function. It wasn't defined in the lambda function. So this is the concept of closures. So if you if you don't know about it, please go ahead and check my other video. So before we close down this video, I would like to convey two points on Lambda functions. So if you think that using the regular function, which is defined using the def keyword, having that function makes more sense, it's more readable and it's, it's clean, then probably use it over Lambda functions. Uh, do not force the use of Lambda functions. And secondly, uh, if you have to use a Lambda function where you are also assigning it to a variable and then invoking it somewhere down the line in your code, then probably use the def keyword, the function with the def keyword. Reason for that is if you will have a bug in your code, then it will be hard to trace the Lambda functions because the stack trace, if you if you'll see the stack trace, that will not mention to what to which variable that particular lambda function was assigned it will just say lambda so it will be hard to find which lambda function is the stack trace talking about so uh, these are some important uh, tips for the lambda functions and with that i hope that you liked the video you understood what are lambda functions and i hope to see you in the next one see you